Hello, everybody. Today, I have a huge treat. I cannot tell you how excited I am um, because I have one of my best friends, Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Hi. And her husband, Shane. Hi, Shane. Hi. Um, so throughout my career of being a carnivore and being a coach for the past almost five years now, five years, that's crazy. Um, I help people all over the world and all over the country. And, um, the biggest question I get, like, I mean, I'm telling you like 95% of the time when people reach out to me, they ask me where I get my meat. And, um, a lot of times I, I tell them, but a lot of times my local um, uh, producers, they they don't ship. And when Audrey told me that you guys are going to be shipping and that you have a website, I was just like, I have to talk to you guys. <laughs> like we have to, we have to tell the people about this. Um, so um, I am so excited because for me personally, I learned to get out of the grocery store first by listening to Nevi Bally. And I know a lot of the people that, that follow me um, are familiar with Farm to Fork Meat Riot and Nevi Bally. And she explains the difference of what we get whenever we're eating out of the grocery store versus when we're getting something fresh from the farm. So um, if you guys ever just wanted to sit down and talk to a farmer, you're welcome. Here we go. Um, and I'm going to just ask you guys a couple of questions to see if maybe that's something that they would want to know. So um, Walking J Ranch. Um, I kind of know, but where'd you get the name Walking J Ranch? So I guess about 25 years ago, it, it was always the, the uh, Rocking J Ranch. And um, I kind of wanted to get away from my family's just, I wanted to be my own thing. So I just, <laughs> I came up with a walking J and most people mistake it for a JW, but it's actually a J with legs. But uh, yeah, that's, I just, that kind of popped in my head a long time ago and I, it's been that way ever since. Uh, and but J is that, for it, Johnson. Yes. Yeah. J is for Johnson. Uh, just kind of wanted to branch out on my own, have my own thing. But I get it. No, that's awesome. And, um, and so for people who know locally, um, where uh, where are you guys located at? So we're in Potosi, Missouri. We're approximately 60 miles southwest of St. Louis. Um, small town, but uh, kind of central, central, east central Missouri. Perfect. Perfect. And what I love about is that even if they're not right here in southeast Missouri, that, mm -hmm. they, that you guys are going to be shipping. Um, and how... Um, as far as why are you doing this? Like there's so many other easier careers that you could choose. <laughs> so, so there's a, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why one thing it's the main thing that's my passion. It's, it's what I, what I love to do. It's what I want to do. Um, uh, but there, the, the reasons that for this part of it specifically is just, we see a big gap of there's not healthy meat out there. Um, I sit in cell rings a lot. I see I see the sick cattle that walk through and then get bought by the the processors. Um, you know, when you go buy a, 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 a two pounds of hamburger at a at a big market store, you know you, there could be multiple cattle ground up into that sick ones. You know, full of hormones. Who knows what? And uh, I really just wanted to be able to provide a uh, a quality, healthy beef to people. Um, something that I would feed to my kids and, you know, or my, my neighbors to feed to their kids. Uh, I wanted to get away from growth hormones. Um, and yeah, and you were saying before when we were talking, um, that all they have to do at a sale is to get the cow to walk in. Oh yeah. If that cow will walk through the gate. She's, she's going somewhere. Um, which is, they could be pumped full of very high powered antibiotics, uh, they could have they could have multiple infections. Um, just the list goes on. And, and where's uh, that meat going? It's going to your your large supermarkets, to your fast food restaurants. Uh, we do get a lot of beef out of from out of you know Brazil and some other places too. But a lot of that stuff is going to right to your right to your plate. You know um, whether it's either fast food or your your large chain supermarkets. 
even smaller chain, you know, smaller supermarkets, they get a lot of that. Um, they, uh, and, and how do you guys do it differently at Walking J Ranch? So for one, a lot of, the, especially, so we're going to do two different things. We're doing the, uh, like regular feeder beef, you know, uh, grass, grass fed, grain finished. Uh, we're not using hormones. Uh, we're using non-GMO feed. We are using limited use antibiotics. And I, if we get a sick animal, we are going to, we're going to, I'm not going to let it die. We're going to, we're going to doctor it, but that cat, that, that animal is going to be taken out of the rotation and won't be, won't be put into, you know, sent off to processing. Um, what we're doing instead, we're trying to treat the animals with a lot of vitamin treatments and things like that initially to prevent any sickness, which is all healthy. It's the same things that you or I would take like multivitamins or, you know, vitamin C, things like that. Um, the, uh, the non-GMO feed is a big deal to me um, just because the glyophosphates can transfer from, it's, it's just not good. Yeah. Um, we are feeding all organic hay uh, and all those things, you know, all these things, it's, it's really beneficial for the, the consumer, but it, you know, it does come in a little bit of an added cost. It's, it's, uh, it takes more ground. I do not want to uh, run these cattle in, in small confined pens. So for people that don't know how this works, your rate, rate of gain is going to be a lot higher if you, if you have that animal in a limited space to burn calories, you know, it'd be like, someone sitting on a couch and eating all day versus going out and walking around, you know, <laughs> um, I don't, myself, I don't feel like that's how a cow's intended to live. You know, um, I think you're going to, I think your body's going to get what you put in. And I think, it, you know, it'd be like, it's, you're just eating an obese animal is what you're doing. And uh, so they're going to stay in the field. Our rates of gain are going to be a, little, a bit slower than, than we could get. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time and I know there's a lot of tricks to the trade, but I, I, I want it done right. I, I want it to be healthy and I want the animal to have a, a good life while they're, you know, I, I've explained to you before, or I told you a while ago, I, you know, I, I know their food, it's what we eat. I've been doing this a long time, but I, I want them to have a good life while they're here. I want a, uh, uh, a very ethically treated animal, uh, Something we do different is uh, 90, I, I'm going to say 90% of our interactions with these cattle are on horseback. We're not, we're not wow. racing through them on motorcycles or four wheelers or anything like that. And my, my boys can tell you that cattle, where the cattle's at, it's off limits for anything. You know, we, we may run a, you know, some range cubes or give them a treat every now and then with a, you know, a side by side, but for the most part, if there's an interaction with us and the cattle, it's on a horse. It's just a, I think a calmer way. Everything's calmer. I, I really wanted to, to get everything back to, you know, the old way is our way. I, I want everything back the way it used to be and the way it should be. Yeah. Um, I think you said that you said that quick, but the slogan, I love this on the website, the old way is our way. Um, and, and I think that's so important because people just keep wanting to like change things and renovate things and make things new, but you have found that the old way is the best way. Well, it's, it's generally just a better way of life. You're getting better. You're getting a better product. Uh, even our fields, like we're, we're not using commercial fertilizers. We do use some lime to balance the pH in our, in our soil and things like that, which is, uh, for people who don't know, it's just ground up limestone is what it is. It, it reduces acidity, you know, changes the acidity in your soil. But as far as nutrients for the soil, it's going to be, you know, fertilizer from the animals. Uh, we will intensive, you know, we'll have them graze and then we'll spread that, that, that waste around to, you know, uh, to help the soil too. Uh, there's a, I don't know. I, I, I just really, the bottom, my whole goal is just to, it just makes me sad to walk into Walmart and see people with big packs of hamburger. And it, I, it's just, it's just bad for you. It's, uh, it's not, it's not what beef was supposed to be. And, uh, we are offering the, you know, the grass fed grain finished, uh, animals as well as like a, uh, an aged grass fed beef, which is not really on our website. That's going to be more of a, if you're interested, you're just going to have to contact me and I can get in touch with you and 
we we figure out if if we have what we have available and, and things like that yeah and um one thing that i i did want to uh, go back to really quick is um kind of like where you guys started um because you guys told me a little bit about the history and um i would love to hear about the land um, that you guys are on so the oldest the oldest piece of ground we have was actually part of my uh, my family got it in the Spanish land grant. I believe it was in 1802. That went on from the late 1700s to the very early 1800s. And uh, from the best that's been passed down to me, it was right around 1802. We got that in the Spanish land grant. And, uh, you know, we've been raising cattle on that for well, until today. And amazing. Uh, I, I would like to like to keep that, you know, uh, and I, you know, the average cattle producer right now, or ran, I'm not going to say producer, I'm going to say average cattle rancher is in his 50s now, because your large, uh, you know, your large corporate farms are buying, buying everything up. Uh, they're controlling the, the market, they're controlling what you're eating, they're controlling the chemicals that's in this beef. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, uh, if we don't, if we don't start supporting our local local ranchers, you're not going to have a choice of what you eat. There's not going to be a, a Shane and Audrey. You can go buy a, a good, because they're going to drive us all out of business. And that's not just, that's that's me preaching for the whole industry. That's me preaching for the, the guy on a horse right now sitting somewhere in Montana and with it, with it freezing cold. I mean, that's for all of us. If we don't if we don't push back and take control of what we're selling, um, it's, it's all going to be corporate. And you know how corporate farming is. It's it's not good for us. It's good for the bottom line. And it's not good for the animals. It's not. Uh, I, you know, every one of my animals, I can walk out and pet it. They're pets to me. And uh, it kills me every time we, we send any of them off. I mean, I, I care about them. I, I want them to have a, I really want them to have a quality, quality life while they're here. I, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not at all against eating animals. I that's I live on beef, but I that doesn't mean to say that I want to see them have a have a bad time while you know, yeah while they're here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and so talk just a little bit because I think so many times people have a poverty mentality and they think, oh, but it's so much cheaper for me to just go buy McDonald's and get the quarter pounder patties, or it's so much cheaper for me to just get the big you know, tube from Walmart. Um, so why is there a difference in the price bef between the, the cheap meat and, um, quality meat? So if you take your cheaper meats, they're going to be raised a lot of the ways I'm talking about. We don't want to raise the meat, but if you take, if you buy a share of beef, which you're going to, you know, if you buy a half of beef or a, and we have a chart on our website that kind of shows like family size and compares, you know, how much, if you like a quarter, how long it would last, the, you know, the refrigeration requirements and things like that. But um, if you take that and you average that out with your steaks, your roasts and everything, you know, it's, it's going to be pretty comparable to what you would, you would spend at a, at a grocery store. But the, the, uh, the problem is that like the, the, your cheaper meats, it's, it's being mass produced. They're, you're buying like an obese diseased animal in most, most cases. And, it's that's why it's cheaper you know that's that's why it's cheap um and that's not to say you know there are in our industry there are local guys that'll do the same thing you know so whether you buy from us whether you buy from joe down the road or whoever if you know talk to them and and see if they're passionate about what they do if you're if you're not in the spot where you can go and visit them you know look at see if they're practicing what they preach um i anybody it's easy to do i mean if somebody's over across the country from from us going together sharing the shipping share you know get together and and promote awareness with your friends hey i'm getting this organic fed you know beef and it tastes so good come over here and check it out okay yeah mm -hmm. i I, wa I want some of that but i don't want to buy a whole you know a whole beef and a half like let's all get together and and share you know, that's what people do all the time. Yeah. And for me, the first time I did it, I was shocked at how easy it was for me to go get a deep freeze, you know, and I, I, 
totally be transparent to everybody. I still live in an apartment. And so it wasn't like I had like a garage and I could have like an extra refrigerator or, or freezer or anything. I went to, um, I think it was, I think it was Menards. I went to Menards and I got a, a deep freeze for about $250. And um, that was like three years ago. And that was the best decision I could have made because now I can get quarter cow, half cow. Um, and uh, it, it, it was easy, but for me, when, when I was just in my little, little thinking, I was like, I can't fit that in my freezer. Like I can't fit that in my freezer. Yeah. And it wasn't until I had a conversation with, it was with Nevi. I had a conversation with her and then the farmer to find out, okay, you know, you gotta be a big girl and you gotta get a quarter cow. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, I gotta do this. And then I got the, the deep freeze and now it's, I can't, I always love filling it up because it just makes me feel like the richest person around. Like I have a <laughs> full deep freeze. Yes. There is a sense of comfort to having that, that pool. And on our facts page, um, there, there is a chart on there that if anyone has questions, like if I buy a quarter beef, how much room, how many cubic feet do I need to store that and things like that to give you some freezer space yeah. ideas. Um, you know, uh, but yeah. I don't know if I answered your question before I went yeah. off on. Everything no, you else. did. Um, what I really like also is that, like you said, um, on the website, it's got your email address. And so anyone can just email you and just ask, you know, ask these questions about shipping, ask these questions about, um, you know, how you raise your, your cattle, how you process your cattle. That was the next question I wanted to ask you is about your processor, because I think that you know, yes, farms uh, are not all the same and what they say they, they are, but processors aren't as well. So uh, we work directly with a local processor. Um, I've known the guy my whole life. He runs a very reputable business. Uh, great, great, great people. I can promise you your, your meat will be well taken care of. It's extremely sanitary, USDA uh, certified facility. Um, just just good folks. They're, you know, they're just normal, you know, just a family like us. And that's, that's what they do. They you know they process beef and uh, they do a very good job of it too. And uh, so that's every, all, all of our meat will go through him. And then when it's done, we'll ship it from there. But uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think it's so important and sorry, I keep going back to Nidhi, but that's the main thing that Nidhi says is you need to have boots on the ground. And so you need to have boots on the ground to be able to connect with the farmer and the processor. And so what I love about this is I, I can vouch for you guys. Like I have boots on the ground, like you are my neighbors <laughs> and you are, Audrey is one of my best friends in the whole wide world. And I've, I've physically hugged her. So I love that I can vouch for you guys and I can say, okay, we've got boots on the ground and that you can vouch for the processor you've had boots on the ground in the processor um oh, that's so important well, i will say uh, if any you know you mentioned my email address if anyone has any kind of question whether you want to buy from us if you just have a question about you know locally sourced meat I'd, I'd be more than happy to answer your email call you if it's someone that's across the country that uh, has questions about it and they want to virtual tour i can you know i can do a zoom call while i'm out in the middle of it and you can see what you know you can see that we do that's a great work. idea uh, virtual we're, boots we're, on the ground <laughs> we're, we're we're fortunate enough to everything here or in our location is pretty well covered by cell coverage now so uh we can we can do that it may be a little spotty but we can sure yeah. sure show you around and that's something too i think is important our animals are 10 minutes away from even a two lane highway pretty much yeah and that highway is away from everything and inner <laughs> you're not even going to get to the end it's just like and we're close to all of the, the the mark twain national forest it's just very secluded protected natural very uh energy dense it's very nutrient dense for the for the for the for all the animals, the horses, all, all of it. It's a, it's a good environment for a animal to be in as well as a, a human, you know? Um, so that makes a difference. You know, you're not, you don't have a bunch of cattle lined up against an interstate with fumes. 
Yeah. Constantly driving 80, 90 miles down the highway, big truckers. Uh, it's just a better setup. So that is the gift that we're given here is we are in lovely Missouri and it's tucked away in the, between, you know, the, the Smokies and that ridge over there. And, the, you know, it's just a really nice place to have. I, I know cattle. it's a very nice place to be. I know Audrey, she gets frustrated me a lot to be, you know, I'm gone a lot because I work in a corporate environment during the day and She's like, what, why were you out there so long? It's like, it's just quiet. You know, <laughs> I can get on a horse and I, sometimes I'll just go up there and just sit and watch, just watch and just enjoy, you know, enjoy being around the cattle, enjoy being around. There's nothing like, um, I, I would love, you know, everybody want to experience that. It's, it's, it's not everyone can though, you know, it's just, uh, and it's not for everyone, you know, it's, uh, it's cold, it's wet, it's, nasty at times it's hot it's a lot of work a lot of work but uh yeah you don't get a day off no yeah and you know uh we've been married for 19 years and i i i grew up you know in in the small town with a lot of woods and things like that but i had no clue what raising cattle involved like none and when i when i got married i started talking to his dad and at the dinner table on sundays and i would just ask him all these questions and be like wow so why do you do that and like you 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 feed the the like the the baby cattle and the the moon and all I was just intrigued it, and I still am you know I still I still ask questions he probably gets sick of it but I'm like now why do you do that again you know because I didn't grow up in that but I've been blessed to be around it and and have the a increase in my respect for the whole process you know and just for people that are willing to actually go out and do this because yeah I mean I'm not naturally prone to get on a horse and go out in the muck and round up cattle and, 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 with, you know, I, I would have never been exposed to this had I not married him and, and, and seen that. And it, it really wasn't that big of a value to me, to be honest. And now it's a huge, it's a necessity. It's a, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a necessity yeah. too. So, you know, I, I was, I was the one going into Walmart with my mom during grocery shopping day and oh yeah, let's get some ground beef and some turkey and chicken, blah, blah, blah. You know, and now I'm like, they put big color in that. Oh my gosh, I can't buy this. This yes. even just feels weird to me. I can't do it. That, that is one thing a lot of people should know if you're buying meat like locally sourced like this, it's not going to look like your meat from, I don't want to say stores and names, but it's not going to look like a like grocery store meat. It's because there's, one or two. there's not chemicals on it. There's not, it's, it's better. It tastes better. You'll taste the difference, but it's, uh, it's not going to look quite the same. And, uh, also for people that are interested in like the grass fed only beef, that's a totally different, I don't care for it myself. I, I like a grain, grain finished beef, but uh, yeah. a lot of folks like that grain, that grain or sorry, grass finished. And it's a different, uh, the fat's a different color. It's, yep. uh, the marbling's not there. It's you're, if you haven't tried it, you may want to try it before you you buy a bunch of it because it's not your norm. And there are ways to cook it that are. And I hope to have some of that kind of information on the website. You know, it's it's a it's a process. It's in a it's in process, but um, I I hope to have some portions of our website that that cater to folks that want to learn how to cook and, and uh, prepare like a grass fed or you know even I'm a state guy. Audrey can tell you I. We're, I, I take great pride in it, but I would like to have some sections of that eventually that, that can help people prepare that, but sp specifically the grass finish, because it's, if you don't cook it right, it can be very tough and it's not be as, not what you expect, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, anything else that we did not touch on that you guys are wanting to make sure that people know um, about your operation? Yeah. For me, the only thing I, I can say is, uh, you know, we're just, we're here to work with the land, not against it. We're here to put a a high quality, nutritious, healthy food on your on your plate that's not full of stuff that you shouldn't have. You know. Um, yeah, and 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 purchasing from us is a uh, it's a plan. You know, you're not going to get your your beef immediately right? You, there's a deposit, there's steps involved, but anything that's done well, isn't necessarily an immediate gratification, but while you're saving, while you're 
preparing to take this chunk of money and invest in your family's health, go ahead and seek out different areas where you can be healthier with your beef, with your chicken, with all of that stuff. But, you know, look at it as an investment. It's an investment yeah. in your family's health, in yours, and it'll be there before you know it. It's not, it doesn't take long. Well, it's, you know, it's what three. I did want to touch on that real quick too. So it's yeah. generally from the time you order, you're looking at anywhere from 90 to 120 days for that animal to be processed. We do, and I'm going to explain why I do it. We do ask for a deposit. Um, this, the way, the way we're doing this is not the cheapest way to do it. And there are substantial costs involved in doing it. And uh, it's uh, we've had, in the past, yeah, it's it's easy to like order this stuff, and then three months down the road, someone pops up, and you know your transmission goes out on your car or something. It's like, well, Shane, we can't, you know, we can't pay for the beef that you just spent thousands of dollars raising for us, and it's like, oh, and you already processed it. Yeah. So what we do, we ask for a deposit um, on the we once we establish your date of uh, processing that week, we ask for full payment. And then it'll we'll box it up and on dry ice and insulated boxes and overnight it to you. Or if you're if you're local, that's even better. If you want to pick it up, we can mm-hmm. we can figure something out. You know, we want to we want to work with people, so that's whatever we have to do. But yeah, and if you live somewhere semi close, you know, get up, get with friends, you know, get together, say hey, I'm going to go down and pick this up, come back up, you know, chip in on gas. There's lots of ways you can do it, but we'd love to see more families in the country getting on board with the, the, you know, it's such a dynamic part of our, our, our health and our food and what we do every day. So it, it, it would be a life-changing thing. And the beef is so great. It's so much it's, different. <laughs> it's the last thing I want to say, if you don't buy from us, find a trustable, reputable local person. Yes. It's time for all of us to push back against these corporate farms. The, uh, the, I'm just, you know, the Bill Gates of the world controlling yeah. these, this, our food sources. Uh, give the power back to your your local folks that that care about what you're eating and what they're putting out. Um, and like I said, whether it's me, whether it's find someone, stay away from the grocery stores and and put good food on your plate. Yeah, and like like you said earlier when we were talking, we have a choice right now. But if we keep going the way that we're going, we're not going to have a choice. No, we won't. They're they're slowly driving people like us out. And uh, I, I, I may have told you, right, till, you know, another 30, you know, 40 years from now, we're going to be, a, we're already a dying breed and we're, we're going to be few and far between if we don't do something. So keep it local. Yeah. Learn your, learn your food. Keep it local. Learn your food. Yeah. Small farms. I think that's what's so important. You know, whenever we go into the corporate, um, you know, farms and everything, that's whenever it gets into, uh, you know, not centralizing like everything. Um, so, um, uh, the best way to contact you directly would be shane.johnson at walkingjcattle.com. That's your email, correct? Yep. And there's a contact us uh, tab on our website. Um, you can sign up for, to get on our email list. Oh, awesome. Um, we'll update. So right now we are trying to partner with some other places to get uh, like similarly sourced chicken and pork, things like that. I don't want to get into the chicken and pork myself. And I, I'm still in more of a vetting process because I, if we if we put anything out there, I want to make sure that it's good and it's right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we can update people on that if they're interested. Um, like I said, I'm a beef guy. I don't really want to get into pigs and chickens, but uh, I know a lot of a lot of folks like that stuff too. So I would like just to have them uh, have for them for them to have a, a place to to sell it and, and to move their you know if we if we all work together, I think we can do a lot of th- good things. But uh, like I said, we're still in the vetting process. I want to make sure anyone that we do partner with on that is 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 the right person. Yep, just know that's coming down the tubes. <laughs> and we Absolutely. just appreciate you having this interview with us, Emily. It's, um, yeah, it's thank been you. Fun and thank you so much. Spread the word and and also if if any of your folks do sign up on our email list, we are going to do some uh, Traeger Grill giveaways this year. Traeger um, Grill changed my life. <laughs> I got one for my dad for Father's Day two years ago. 
best Father's Day present I've ever given him because I get all of this amazing, amazing grilled, smoked, like, oh my gosh. And he was a great grill master before. Like he knew oh. his stuff, but Traeger like leveled this man up. So <laughs> you guys are having a, like a, a raffle or? Um, probably what we're going to do is uh like, Everyone on our email list, we're going to do some giveaways. Uh, we still wow. haven't got all the details with it yet. So make sure and sign up, you know, stay, we'll send out a, and I'm not going to bombard anyone's email with daily. I, I hate giving my email address to every, anyone because <laughs> I actually have a separate email account just for stuff like that because I, I hate it. But uh, we're not, I'm really going to not try to bombard uh, anyone with a bunch of junk. It's going to be pertinent information to what you're interested in. And like I said, giveaways like that. And it'll be a pretty small pool of people. So if you're, you know, uh, if you're interested, it, your odds will be pretty good. We're just, we just want to, uh, you know, do something nice for folks. And there's not much, I, I don't know. That's about the best way to cook meat that I know of. So, hundred percent, hundred percent. Awesome. So the website is walkingjranch.com. I will have that in the, the um, comments in the description. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, doing this, not only for me locally, but, um, that you're willing to ship. Um, that is, that is the next step that a lot of, uh, local farmers, uh, haven't done. Um, and so when Audrey told me, I was like, oh, like, yay, like I can go tell my people. Um, uh, so thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.